In the previous video, we learned what the implicit flow was. Then, we wrote an OAuth client for Facebook in JavaScript that implemented the implicit flow. We refactored that code in a later video. And in this video, we'll write an OAuth client for Google. We'll use JavaScript and we'll be implementing the implicit flow again. But instead of writing the code all over again, we'll just make the necessary changes to the refactored JavaScript code we wrote earlier to work with Facebook and we'll change it so that it now works with Google as well. The link to the source code for this video can be found at this URL. This URL, along with all the other URLs for the previous videos I mentioned, are provided in the description. I've already got an app registered with Google. It's called FooBar. I've created OAuth credentials for that. In case you don't know how to register an app with Google and create OAuth credentials for it, Watch this video of mine. Link provided in the description. Google has several API, and we'll be getting the user's full name, first name, and email address using the Google Plus API. So as a next step, I'll go to the Library tab here and enable the Google Plus API for use within my application. By default, it's going to be enabled. As for the code, let's start by changing the HTML. The only visible change I can see here is the text of the anchor tag. Now, if I look at the refactored code, all of it is cut up in chunks, and so my first line of attack would be to change the values of the properties in this app object, because this is the object that looks like a configuration that holds OAuth stuff. The things I'm going to need to change are the client ID, the redirect URI will be the same, so will the response type. I need to change the scope, but I don't know the values I need to provide here, so I'll just Google them. I look up the Google Plus API in this list on the right. These are the values of the scopes, and this is the description. This one sure gives me an email. But about the other three, they seem kind of overlapping and ambiguous in what they do. So to find out which one I actually need, the best way is to try out this API in a playground that Google provides. That's called the API Explorer. To get there, I'll just type Google API Explorer. And I'll look for the API that I want to explore or test, which is the Google Plus API in this list. Now, on the left, what you see is a list of activities or functions that I can perform. These are not scopes, neither are they URL endpoints. They're just logical activities that I can get. This seems like the one I'd like to get a person's full profile, which might include his email address as well, I'm guessing. So let me click this. I'll type in the user ID for the user whose data I want. And since I'm only going to test it, I don't know any ID of any user, neither do I know my own ID. So I can type the special keyword me if I want to get my own data. I don't know what fields I need to get. In fact, that's another purpose of this exercise is to find out what fields come in the entire response so I can select the ones that are relevant. And I will then authorize the request by clicking, by toggling this knob here or by clicking this button, authorize and execute. This shows the scopes. Now, if I select all of them, I wouldn't know which scope gets me what fields. So I'll just deselect all of them first. Now, I do know that I need the user email. This scope is going to give me just the email, so let me select this one. Out of the other three which were overlapping and somewhat ambiguous, let me select just the first one called plus.login and see if it gives me data that is sufficient. All I need is the user's full name, 
first name and email address. You see that this has made a GET request to this URL, which is the base URL here. That seems like the OAuth server URL. I'm sorry, that seems like the resource server URL. So let me copy this guy and paste it in my app object as the resource server URL. I don't know the auth server URL yet. I'll get it later. And this has to become Google. And since we are in scope right now, let me go back here and see if I have all the data in the plus dot login and user dot email scopes. It looks like I have the user's email address. I do have his full name and I do have the name parts. Now out of all this, the fields, as far as the fields are concerned, I need just the email address, which looks like an array of objects. So I need just the first element of this array and that to the value property of the first element. I do need the display name property of the big entire parent object and I need a name object and in fact even from the name object I need just the given name property. So my fields following the XPath syntax will look something like this. I need the emails, comma, I need the display name and I need the name object but of the name object too I need just the given name. If I just get this much data from these two scopes I should have all the data I need. And this looks like all the data I actually need. So let me go and, as the next step, copy this fields object into my code. Over here. Now fields is an optional parameter as far as Google OAuth is concerned. If I do not specify the fields, as we did not specify these fields in this request earlier, and we got all the response fields. We can do that even in the code. I can omit this fields at all and it'll give me all the fields in the entire response body or I could have these fields and get just what I want. And that's better. It saves me bandwidth. Let me copy the scopes. These two scopes gave me what I wanted. So I'll just copy them and paste them in my code. You'll notice a difference. These scopes, unlike Facebook scopes, which are just simple words, these are URIs. Of course, they're not URL endpoints that point to a service, but they are URIs. Not that it matters, but it's a thing to note. So I have my scopes and my state remains unchanged. I have the provider name as Google. I need the OAuth server URL, which I'll just Google again. I'll say Google OAuth uh, server URL. And I'll just click a bunch of links to find out which one has the endpoint. This looks like the endpoint. I'll copy and paste it here. And I'll put a question mark at the end. And that looks like I have my app object ready. Excellent. Let's refactor the rest of the code. Let me look at the page object and just go over each function. It looks like I don't need any change to the main function here. I don't need any, that is to the constructor function. The display function is also going to be having the same logic. The only one difference I observe in Facebook is that Facebook will send us an access token with a URL like this. You know, this is the redirect URL <clears throat> with a question mark and then the access token or the state. And of course, it'll have at the beginning of the query string parameters, it has a URI fragment indicator. This is what Facebook sends back. Let me just make this bigger so you can see. The difference I've seen with Google is that Google sends back exactly the same thing, except it doesn't have this question mark at all. 
So the URL just has a fragment indicator and the access token with the state. But if it sends an error, then it does have that question mark. So when it sends an access token, Google doesn't send back a question mark. So I'll need to change my code a little bit. Let's make it a little smaller. Um, the display function is the same. All I need to do is change the part that parses this URL, which we know exactly where to go. We, know, we need to go to this params initializer. And I need to change this bit of code, which I have already changed for you. Earlier, I was just checking if this doesn't have a question mark, then return this. Now I've made it to check for the presence of either a question mark or so in fact, if it doesn't have a question mark and it doesn't have a pound sign, then just return the empty object. Otherwise, if it doesn't have a question mark, it's bound to have a pound symbol. And if it doesn't have, and if it does have a question mark, then it's bound to have the question mark. And the rest of the code is the same. So that's one visible change I've made. And that's probably the only change to this code. And the other change that I've made is I've noticed that Google Access Tokens also have, may have an underscore in them. And so what I was doing earlier was with Facebook, I would receive an error like this. Error equals and then access denied or something. And error message was something else and then error description. And either of them had underscores in the values. So what I was doing was while getting these, I would remove an underscore from the value. And this would remove an underscore from the value regardless of, of uh, what the value was. And so if that would also remove the underscore out of the access token, and then we would send an invalid access token and the API call would fail. So I need to change this bit over here and say, don't replace it, you know, re replace it only if the props zeroth value zeroth element is an access token is not an access token sorry so if you don't have an access token if the current pair is not an access token only then please replace the prop arrays first element value and assign it back to the prop arrays first element uh, I think that's the only change I need to make. And just to be on the safe side, let me replace. I'm also replacing something else here. I think I'm looking for a plus sign and replacing that with something else over here. Let me not do that. I'm replacing any plus sign. And just in case this token has a plus sign, it'll be safe to do it here. So if it's not an access token, only then go ahead and replace this. Replace any occurrences of the underscore or the plus sign with a space each. And I'm sure there's a better way to write this regular expression all into one. But at the moment, I'm not too concerned about that. That's probably it. Let's just go over the entire code once to see if there's any other change we need to make. The display functions logic is exactly the same. If you have an error or an access token, do something else. Otherwise, it's the first time. Please display the login URL. And the rest of the concerns are simply UI concerns. There's one thing I need to do is display the welcome message differently because the structure of the response has changed. So the welcome message will be displayed exactly the same. It's just this bit I need to take care of. The welcome label, the title of the welcome label, over there I need the full name of the user. And the full name in this case is called the display name in the case of Google. And then I need as the text of the email anchor tag, I need the first name only of the user. And that's in the name object called in a property called given name. And then for the email, I think I'll get it from the emails array, zeroth element dot value. But I need to check first, there's no property called email, I need to check if this emails array is not undefined, and uh, a redundant check, but I'll still just to be safe, I'll say if the length is greater than zero only do this 
and for the rest of the code, I think uh, it should stay exactly the same. Let's execute just this much and see if it works. Okay, I've been doing it a lot already, so let me go and deauthorize this application before I. The reason I'm getting this different scope offline access is because I've already tried this before this demo on my own and I've already granted the scopes that I'm asking for now. So, but Google is saying, okay, you already have the scopes. I think this application also wants offline access, which I don't want to talk about right now, but let me go and deauthorize my application. I'll go to my account and sign in and security. Over here, there's this connected apps and sites. I'll go here and see what apps have I given permission to. I will manage those apps. And there's my app FooBar, which has some account access, including my basic profile. I will deauthorize this app. Then I'll go back to my code and execute it. So it'll ask me everything now. It says it wants to know your age, range, and language, and your basic profile info, both of which are a part of basic profile, and it needs your email address. I will allow it. And I have an error which I need to debug. So let's go to the network tab and reload and see what response we get. We get a unauthorized. Why is that? Invalid credentials. So it, apparently it hasn't sent the access token. Let's look at why it hasn't sent the access token. Let's look at the URL that I'm sending the access token to and debug it here. Okay, that's the access token. And these are the fields. And it looks, oh yeah. So again, I have replaced the actual access token. Let me, let me see. I'm sure there was an underscore or a plus sign over here. And so my code hasn't changed yet. Let me go and check uh, what the original access token was which I received, which I can check by simply looking at this guy here. In the redirect URI, the access token I got was this. And therefore, there was an underscore which I ate and made it a space. So I need to go back to my code and see if it is actually, first of all, let me see, because I did make this change, let me see if it has actually loaded the correct code or not. Uh, so it has, old, it has the old code loaded, it has still not loaded the correct code. It is unconditionally replacing the underscore with a space. So that's the problem. Let me just refresh my browser's cache, because that seems like the problem here. And let me make sure this time that it has the correct code. Well, it still doesn't have the correct code, so I will close this tab. I will make sure these files are saved. And I'll make sure the path is right. I will go back here, look at the debugger to see the URL file, whether the code has changed. It still has the old code. It still has the old code. I'm not sure why the browser's cache is not being cleared. This is the new code. Let me cross check the path. That's correct. And that's correct too. So let me just now it has the new code. And so I shouldn't have that problem now. And I don't, it works just fine.